A uh, reminder for this group, Market Square Madness takes place next week, Thursday, October 13th. Uh, the fan activities in Market Square begin at 7, and the event program starts at 8. Um, for those of you interested in applying for season-long credentials, be sure to get those applications in by next Friday, the end of the day. That link was sent. Uh, you should have gotten an email last Friday. SEC tip-off is Wednesday, October 19th at the Grand Bohemian in Birmingham. If you plan to attend that event and you haven't applied for the credentials through the SEC, make sure that you do that. Uh, that deadline is next Tuesday. Tennessee's player representatives are seniors Josiah Jordan James and Santiago Vescovi. And lastly, single game tickets for both the Vols and the Lady Vols will go on sale later this week and you'll receive an advisory about that tomorrow. And with that, entering year eight, Tennessee basketball coach Rick Barnes. I think we've had a good week. Uh, you know, I really, um, as you guys know, the rules that we have now, we get to spend a lot of time with our guys when school's in session. And what really changes is obviously we go from the eight hour week to the 20 hour week. And, and uh, but excited about our guys. I think they've worked hard. They're, they're certainly working hard together. And we know we still got work to do. We've got to improve and every, there's not an area that we don't have to improve in, but uh, Certainly some ones that we're really concentrating on is our, our ball screen defense has got to be better, and we've got to do a better job of uh, really guarding the basketball. And then offensively, the way we like to play, um, protecting the ball. But overall, it's just been a, it's been a good week and uh, happy with where we are right now. Rick, how is this team different than, than a year ago? I think they're older. Uh, Grant, I, I do. I think the fact that they're, they're older, they've been through it. But just because we're older doesn't mean we're going to be better unless we make ourselves better. And what that means is that we can never allow complacency to set in. I think that when you look at our team, <clears throat> the additions to our team, and, our, and you know, we're excited about our young players, that uh, the competition has been really good. But uh, uh, it's uh, – We've got to look at where we were a year ago, and like I said, some of the areas I mentioned are where we know we've got to get better. We have to, and uh, but obviously we're counting on the leadership that we had a year ago to pick up not only where it left off, but to take it to another level. And and there's not one person in the program that doesn't have to get better some way somehow. And and uh, but we've we've had a great attitude about I think guys being able to look at what they need to get better at, and they're working at it. What's the significance of having two guys like Santi and Josiah that aren't just seniors but have played significant minutes since their freshman seasons? Well, I'd say one is their basketball IQ. They both really have a, a terrific basketball IQ when it comes to understanding what we're trying to do as a team. And they uh, not only know what they're supposed to be doing, but they really have a pretty good feel for what all the other positions call for. And the more you can get guys to understand that, it, that really is when you can start – mixing and matching and doing a lot of fun things from a coaching standpoint. But to have two of them that truly understand it the way they do is, is, uh, is, is, is you, don't, you don't get it sometimes. But we've got that. And, and uh, so not only are they, when they're, when they're playing, whether in practice or in a game, they impact the game when they're not because they're able to coach. And they're able to help guys coming out of timeouts or uh, just on the sideline uh, during practice. I will look over some and those guys are, involved with the guys that have just come out or I've told them to step back and until they can figure something out. Those guys are great to be there to, to say, hey, this is what we're looking for. This is how we do it. This is what you have to do. And so when you have two guys like that, uh, it's a tremendous help to your team. Rick, I think you had said you want to play faster. What's the key to that? Is it guard play? Is it rebounding, defense? You know, Jimmy, it's probably a little bit of all of it. But, I, you know, playing faster is uh, – it's a, it's, a, it's a mindset, but what goes with that mindset is uh, understanding that, you know, that we've got to be solid defensively. We, we know that. We, 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 we've got to have that every night because we're playing against teams that if you don't guard them, they can ring you up for a lot of points. But uh, passing the ball, passing it with more authority, you know, moving the ball quicker, harder, quicker cuts, definite cuts, uh, you, learning how to set screens better, use screens better. So. Uh, I tell our guys often, you know, we can we could end the possession earlier if we execute earlier in the possession, as opposed to thinking that, okay, you know, we come off a screen when we're open, as opposed to taking an open shot because we're not going to 
ask a guy to come off the screen if he's not if we don't think he's capable of scoring it but when that player decides he's going to try to do more than he than he needs to and then it extends the possession which oftentimes will turn into turnovers or you know, I always say you go looking for trouble, you're going to find it. We just want guys to, as much time as we spend on working with them to get better individually. When when the shot's there, we want to take it. And uh, believe it or not, you think, well, most guys want to shoot the ball. Well, I can show you tape where they really don't because there's opportunities there where it, the shot, the possession should be over with, but but it's not. Rick, you mentioned earlier mix and match with Josiah and Santi, but – how much of an advantage is it in today's college basketball to have versatile players, whether it's position, whether it's roles, things like that, to be able to manage things on the fly? You know, there's a lot of different ways to play this game. There, there really are, and everybody, I think, you know, has to decide what it is. But uh, when you can put guys out there that really can play multiple positions, it it's, uh, gives you a great advantage where, you know, uh, like yesterday for the first time, we you know, we had five guards on the court. and uh, just playing with that to see what we could do, trying to figure out what and how we would could utilize that. But it all gets back again. I mean, you know, offensively, you can do a lot of different things. There's a lot of, you know, there's, you know, we've got uh, like Jonas. Jonas really shoots the ball really well. You know, it's not a matter where you can play as a seven footer. It's not a matter where you can play on offense. It's what position can you guard defensively, and that's where I think we're if you can. Uh, Mix it and match it where you can guard all five spots with all five guys. That's when it. That's when you've got a chance because offensively, it makes it really difficult uh, for those guys that aren't used to playing on the perimeter to be out there trying to guard guys. Guys, that especially that are willing to shoot the three. But uh, when you talk about the mix and match, you've got to obviously think about the defensive end too. Can we guard with that lineup? And I think we'll find that out early if we, if, depending on how much we can use that lineup in our two exhibition games. You mentioned the two exhibition games. Why was it important to schedule those games with those opponents? And how much more do you gain, I guess, out of two games with, with teams like that before you really get going? Well, we've always had an exhibition game. And for, uh, for as long as I can re remember, you know, with Davison and, you know, Coach McKillop, uh, our relationship, we, you know, we had been scrimmaging them for, again, for as long as I can remember. And then we had, uh, before uh, coming here, you know, we had two of those at Texas where we scrimmaged Gonzaga. Our two scrimmages for a long time was Davison and, and Gonzaga, and uh, uh, which we thought was so beneficial to us to get two different looks, total different looks in terms of the way uh, those two teams played. And uh, now, obviously, with Michigan State, you know, Tom and I talked about it often, uh, but we just the commitment that I had to Coach McKillop and. Uh, certainly have great respect for him and his program, but we, we also felt maybe now is a good time with, with the change there that we could try something different, especially with this group, knowing that we were wanting to play a, a, maybe a little different style this coming year and playing against two teams that are, are physical up front, very physical. And uh, But uh, we're excited about both of them and you know two teams that are certainly capable of playing for the national championship, and so early we're going to get a chance to see exactly where we are. Rick, in terms of – is Olivier anywhere near the level that he, he was when he got hurt last year? Has he already gotten back to there? And and with his development in general, where is he now compared to maybe the player you thought you had when you when you recruited him? I don't, I don't think any – like I don't think we are as a team back where we were when we ended the year last year. Uh, you know, we're, we're certainly building to that point. I think Olivier being able to – come back from his injury and have a chance to spend some really quality time with his national team. Just to play basketball was a huge for him. Even though he wasn't here with us, I think overall being able to play, you know, games as opposed to practicing the way that we do and was really helpful to him. I think he's, uh, again, working. And I, I keep telling him we've got to get him not only back where he was because he had really started uh, – doing the things that we felt that he could do when we recruited him. And now we got to get him back there quicker and then get him beyond that. Because he, Urosh, uh, Jonas, and uh, Tobe, their development is going to be a real key to how much better we can get. Because we, we need to be better inside, both offensively and defensively. We need those guys to do a, a great job with uh, particularly ball screen defense. And uh, obviously our guards have got to get better there too. but our 
our post guys, those four guys, it's, it's important. And like I said, we know we can play small. We have to. And uh, but those the development that those post guys is really going to be critical to us. So speaking of that, what about Jonas and, and the strides he made this offseason? Same thing. I, I think the, the mindset's got to be there where it starts defensively, and, and that and that means not only being able to defend him. Jonas does give us a, a, a rim protector, a guy that can block some shots, and, he, and he's willing to do that. But rebounding is going to be key for all those guys. We've got to have great production from those guys on, on the glass, and certainly uh, we need a physical presence inside from all of them. And Jonas – has made again. He's made strides as you would expect him to do. But uh, now it's consistency with him uh, and the physicality. I mean, we're we're a physical team, and when you uh, and he's learning. He, he made great strides a year ago. He really did, and and he's made some again. But he's gonna have to keep making those strides. And I would say that about anybody on our front line, and I would say it about some of our guards too. Rick, just how do you feel about the, the leadership kind of compared to years past? Um, last year, it seemed like it took half a year to get the leadership going on the team. Do you, do you feel comfortable where it is going into the season? I think we're ahead, and, and a lot of it had to do with uh, – I, I go back, uh, I think a lot of the we, – we were slow getting going because I don't know if it was – I don't know if I could just pinpoint one reason, but I think what Zakai brought to us made, made a major impact on, on our entire program. Uh, and every guy here. I mean, he uh, was one of those guys that wasn't going to come in and try to overstep his boundaries. But I think his day-to-day -day mindset and the way he goes about things uh, and his confidence, he, he's an extremely confident player, competitive. And, and I, I do think that his mindset a year ago uh, had a, a really a big-time impact on our team. And then Santi and, and Josiah, they, uh, they took off with it. Uh, it was uh, where, again, accountability would be the word, where they, they really started holding each other accountable. And that's the best part of it. When you got a, a, I talk about it all the time, when you've got a, a, a team that's got great leadership. And, and it's hard to come by. It really is. But I do think the best teams uh, have it. And I think oftentimes it comes from different players in different ways. But uh, but I do think that once it took off, and, and I have to give Zakai a lot of the credit for it because I, I just think he, he gave our program a confidence that, that we've been lacking for a while. Two-part question, just with Coach Schwartz gone, does that change anything that you guys want to do defensively? And then has there been a, an assistant coach that's kind of stepped up and taken the reins of running the defense, or is it just by committee? Yeah, what we've always done, you know, Coach Ganey, Coach Polinski will be the guys. But, again, you know, we've had our defensive system in place for a long time and uh, through, you know, a long time. And But, obviously, we, we tweak something all the time. We're, we, we're going we're gonna to make it work to match our personnel. Uh, we're going to go back and we, we do it, uh, study where we – go back and look at our games and, and uh, a year ago where were where we lacking and where we have to get better and uh, but uh, the fact is I think we've got a chance to be a, a, another terrific team and sometimes the numbers are important no doubt about it when you look at numbers and you know we rank up there high in, in all of them but from a coaching standpoint you look at the fundamentals and where you know we know that we've, we've got to get better that would even help us be even better and uh, those are the areas that Again, you, we've got to get better. And it, I would say rebounding is a big part of it. We've got to do a better job both ends there. And then our, our ball screen defense has got to be better. And um, we, I think in some ways we've got to get a little more physical, believe it or not, especially guarding the ball one-on-one. -on -one. Rick, you've had three one-and-dones the last couple of years. Where does Julian, he, he would be in that conversation, but where does his skill set and kind of his situation compare and contrast to the guys you've had the last couple of years? You know, uh, I think when I think of Julian, uh, it's his mindset. It's uh, I don't think Julian thinks about one and done. I think, you know, he's uh, – his family from the very beginning told us, hey, we'll make that decision when it's, when it's time to be made. Uh, I think he's gone about it uh, his time here. He's, he's been a – it's been an incredible – almost like a dream to coach him because uh, – I tell everybody, I don't know if individually if anyone has spent more time with Garrett. I mean, we've had a lot of guys spend above and beyond, 
But most of the time it's guys having to lose weight, do whatever. Those guys never look forward to that. But, but Julian on his own has, has searched out Garrett more than anybody because he, he, he wants to be the best player he can be. He came in right away. And again, there's no uh, sense of uh, uh, entitlement on his part at all. You know, he's come in, he's, he just wanted to work hard, be accepted. I think he's earned his teammates' respect because he's in his own way. He's just gone about working hard. He, he certainly wants to be coached. He wants to get better. And uh, I think if you talk to him or, or even his family, his circle of trust there, they would tell you, hey, there will be a time to make those decisions. And, uh, but uh, I can tell you we're excited and happy that he's with us because he gives us, again, another guy that has terrific versatility. And as he continues to grow and understand the game more and more, uh, I, mean, he's, I mean, he's got a, a wealth of talent. And, uh, but it's his overall mindset that is really so much fun to be around because he really is about all the right things and wanting to get better. Rick, uh, Tyreek Key, what do you like about him and what do you see his role being? Same thing a lot with, with Julian, you know, just came in and uh, not, not saying a whole lot, but just letting their work uh, ethic speak for itself. I mean, two guys that love to be in the gym, but uh, Tyreek came in and I think he's so much more than probably advertised. You know, we obviously knew him, uh, about him, uh, probably a great deal from the fact that Kevin Feltner with the Tennessee Bobcats who had stayed in touch with him a long time. and. Uh, and, you know, we actually, you know, we recruited Tyreek and, and coming out of uh, high school, but at the time we weren't sure. We wanted to wait till the uh, spring, and but he felt like he had a situation he wanted to be a part of, so we've known about him. And, uh, but he's, everybody talks about his scoring. I think he's so much more than that. I think he's a guy, that, again, that can play multiple positions, and, and uh, he's valuable in the fact that he can do that. Um, High-level competitor, uh, you know, he can, he can score the ball at uh, many different ways, but uh, a great teammate. Uh, again, he uh, every day. I mean, he, he doesn't he doesn't have days off. I mean, you watch him come to practice, mentally, physically. I, he, I'm not saying he's perfect every day, but in terms of his approach to what he's trying to do, he's got a he's older and uh, he's got a just a great uh, attitude on. Okay, here's today. I, I've got to find a way to get better. Whether he's coming in for his individual work or whatever he's doing as a team and we're really fortunate to have him. Rick, you guys shot a lot more three pointers last season than, than you usually had. Was that a byproduct of the players and do you anticipate that continuing to be an identity for, for this year's team? Yeah, I, I mean there's no doubt. I, we're never going to ask players to do something they can't do consistently be good at it and we felt like last year we had a team that could shoot threes. We feel like we got a team this year that can and uh, but with that said, you know, we've got to be able to, because when you get known for a team that can shoot threes, people are going to come out there, and now you have to have somebody who can go to work inside and make them play that way too. So we're not going to abandon what we try to do inside around the rim and those type things. But, uh, you know, like I said earlier, we've got guys that we tell them if they're open, we want them to shoot it. And uh, that's, that's important, and that's where we can get better rebounding the ball, knowing that shots are coming up when they're open, going up when they're open, and then we've got to go make that effort to try to get a, a rebound if necessary. And, but, um, I, I, yeah, I think that we'll probably shoot as many or more than we did a year ago if, if it goes the way it's been going. Rick in the back here, in the way back. Uh, Chris Lofton's retirement, when you broke the news to him, what was that like, and then what does he mean to the program? Well, that was Tom's idea on how to do that, you know. And Chris is around when he's in town. He comes around a lot. He, he we've enjoyed him since we've been here, and the players enjoy him because uh, you know he's always in the gym. Uh, he he watches our guys, and then he'll normally stick around or do something on his own. And actually, the other day when I last saw him, I, he was in the gym working out. And he, I said, "What are you getting ready for?" He said, "This is just my piece right here. I like doing this." And in that way, I think the guys have watched him, a guy go about his business the way he has. And, uh, but uh, he said he thought something was going on, but I'm not sure he did until the very end. But the fact is, it's a great honor for him to do what he, what he did. And, and uh, again, it was something that it was just a matter of time, and it was all based on his schedule. No, nobody wants to retire somebody's jersey if they can't be here. Or, so when you, uh, did you say number, what did you say? You, 
you know, you always change stuff, so I don't, you know. But, uh, but anyway, he, he uh, it, was, it was just a matter of his schedule and the fact that he's here and being from the state of Kentucky, I just think it's, you know, and that's what he would like to do. I mean, if, you, we, had, if we asked him to pick the date, he would have picked that, a game like that too. And, uh, but, again, it's a well-deserved honor to a – you can't find a finer person. And uh, certainly he loves Tennessee and made an unbelievable impact in more ways than we all know. Going back to that idea of playing faster, do you feel like the players have already sort of bought into that mindset, and do you think that's something they could really get excited about and really get behind? Well, they all will tell you that, but they don't realize how hard it is. It's hard. It's really hard to play fast. It's hard to play quick because, you know, you play quick. Sometimes you get down the floor, you get a great look within three or four seconds, five seconds. You shoot, you miss, and if you play defense the way you want to, oftentimes you're going to be on that end for 20, 25, 27 seconds, and then go back and get it again, shoot again. So it's hard. It's a commitment that has to be made uh, where if you're going to shoot it that quick, uh, you got to run. you got to try to outrun people, to try to get to your space on the floor. We're always talking about attacking space, attack your space, know what you're good at, get to it. But uh, it's not easy. Again, uh, they all, all players say, I want to run and play fast. But like I said, it's so much harder than people think. And uh, you're either going to play fast or in between. And, and I think the key, though, is being able to play at all different speeds because some teams aren't going to – they're going to hold the ball on you. They're going to try to shorten the game. So you've got to have a mindset that what you do on the offensive end, you're going to do it. You're going to believe in it. You're going to live with it. But then if we're not uh, getting, say, making the kind of shots we want to make when we call something where we've got to maybe go at somebody to get them in foul trouble or get to the foul line, Players have to be able to make that adjustment too. But the mindset of playing fast and quick, it's, it's, it's got to be developed because it's, as much as players talk about it, it's not innate. You've got to, you've got to develop it. Rick, just being a month out, how, how do you feel about your team's ability to rebound and, and where you all are rebounding just a month out? Well, it's been an emphasis with our coaching staff, and I think they've done a good job with our guys in practice, but uh, we'll see. You know, I mean, it's the same thing. That's not something that guys particularly want to do. I think the guys that understand what goes into winning figures it out. And the guys that do it the most will probably be the guys that play the most because that's rebounding impacts the game in ways that I think most people don't understand. Uh, I mean, you've got to rebound a basketball. You can't be a, a great defensive team if you can't finish it with a, with a solid defensive rebound. And certainly you can't be a team if you're going to play quick think you're going to shoot it and be one and done. You've got to go get some second chances. The good teams are going to rebound offensively probably somewhere between 43, 44, 45% of their misses, and we've got to get better there. Rick, with the, the Gonzaga scrimmage, where did the – it's pretty unique with the charity aspect of it. Where did that come into play in, in your work with the McClendon Foundation? Well, Mark Few had called me about it, and, you know, and, and I think to get the game to be the game, it had to be for a foundation, and there's not a – right now for the McClendon Foundation, John McClendon, just an unbelievable pioneer in, in our game and what he stood for, everything he stood for. And it's a, it's a uh, foundation that is set up for minorities to get into athletic administration. And so to obviously to get the game the way we got it right now, and again, Mark called me about it was, you know, certainly pro, some of the proceeds will go that way. And then whatever else comes from it, it could be some NIL opportunities for players. And we'd like to make it for every player that's there, if, if possible. But uh, the fact is um, we're excited about it. Again, um, I think it uh, – I mean, it's, it's a game. You know, we're, we're going to play it, and I think it will be well attended there and certainly hope that you know, it's uh, picked up by a lot of people from a streaming standpoint. Do you feel like this is the most versatile team you've had since you've been here? You know, uh, I could say yes uh, in some ways. I, I do because, again, uh, I don't know at any point in time uh, I'd say that we could put what would be considered five perimeter players out there at one time. Uh, and, and one reason we'd be able to do that is because of Josiah, because he's got, you know, he's got elite hands. And what he does with, on the defensive end with his hands is really remarkable, and uh, but we also, I think our guards, uh, they're going to fight 
if we if we end up doing a lot of switching with a lineup like that, they're going to fight players in the post. They're going to work hard and be competitive there. And, and um, like I said, uh, the versatility offensively can't be there if it can't if you can't do it on the defensive end. You got to be able to do it on both ends. And I don't think we're there yet, but um, maybe we can get there. All right, thank you, guys.